sometimes the natural light is perfect and then other times the sun is just blurring in my face so today I am here to talk about my November TBR this is exclusively a nonfiction November TBR I am all for an event that gets more people to read nonfiction this is hosted by Olive from a book Olive as well as Gemma from nonfic books they have divided this between four categories that you can pick books out of I will tell you what I picked for the categories the first one I'll tell you about is new and that can mean new to you new subject new book whatever I picked two books the first one is a graphic memoir you can't see because of the lighting that is there to disappoint I've talked about this a couple videos ago it follows a boy who grows up in Turkey discusses topics such as fundamentalism religion science what he wants to be when he grows up and it's cool because it's all by the sea in Turkey so there's a lot of blues that reflect that in the graphic memoir it just looks so different from typical graphic memoirs. This is going to happen for Neil because I don't know anything really about Turkey. Here we go. The next one is one that I have read a little bit of already. I'm doing a project where I'm creating a lib guide and it's all on Marjorie Stoneman Douglas who was an environmentalist in here in Florida who was really into saving the Everglades so I am reading her autobiography for that she's just a really funky interesting lady who like literally was born in the 1890s and lived to be more than a hundred so she kind of saw a lot of things happen in her life and her discussion about her marriage and the divorce it was very strange then she moved to Florida she started working as a journalist she's had like five careers she was a journalist, she was a normal writer, and she wrote books, then she was an environmentalist, like she's done all kinds of things. She was pretty instrumental in changing the ideas of the Everglades as not being a swamp that's disgusting and full of mosquitoes, and it being a very important water source that's more like a river. I read some parts of this too that are really interesting, her ideas about sex and how sex was taught when she was growing up in like the early 1900s, very different than what it is like today. So I'm excited to continue to kind of read through some of this. Some parts are more interesting than others, so I'm just going to pick and choose what I would like to read in this one. The next category is important, and it's just books that you think are important or would be important to read about so I have picked three for this one March book two this is a continuation from March book one which is again about congressman John Lewis and his involvement in the 1960s civil rights movement I have to read this one soon because it's due at the library the next one is bastards of the Reagan era this book has been on my mind for pretty much a year now I put it in my anticipated reads at the beginning of this year it is at the library for the university that's right by me so I have to like physically go there and um, read the poetry collection there but it focuses focuses on Reginald Duane Betts. He went to prison and is now studying law and he really got into poetry while he was in prison and I learned about this book from On Point with Tom Ashbrook on NPR. I just really loved the poetry that he read out loud and I would love to read the whole thing. And last but not least is one that I've also mentioned here before and that is The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks by Rebecca Skloot. I downloaded this on audiobook, I had to return it, and now I am in line waiting again for it on audiobook. But I can also pick it up where I left off in the physical book because I own it. I've talked about this one lots of times before but it's about Henrietta Lacks who's cells were taken out of her cervix. They figured out that her cells were immortal and then were used to revolutionize the medical industry without her family's consent, knowledge, or anything. And I think it's very important because pretty much Henrietta Lacks has had a hand in a lot of diseases that we have eradicated. The next category is fascinating and for this one I picked the book by Keith Houston. I almost forgot his name. <laughs> I put this one on hold at the library and it hasn't arrived yet but this one is an exploration into the book as a medium and it explores kind of the history of books the anatomy of books the bookiest of books and pretty meta but I'm excited to get into this one and I put it in the fascinating category because obviously everybody here including me loves books and I would like to learn more about the history of them and the other one for fascinating that I picked is a graphic memoir that I've already started so I would like to finish and that is Tomboy by Liz Prince this one follows Liz Prince growing up 
as a child and her ideas about gender norms and how to perform gender and how she didn't really fit into this box of a little girl. I'm really enjoying it so far so I'm excited to finish this one in November. And the last category is controversial. I picked two for this one and the first one is On the Run by Alice Kaufman. This book has really come across some controversy. It follows an academic who embeds herself into this Philadelphia neighborhood and goes along with men here to see what everyday life is like for them. She goes into issues about the criminal justice system and she also explores how this exact criminal justice system shuts them out from opportunities in everyday life. When it was first published, it garnered a lot of acclaim and praise, but after that, a lot of other academics started questioning the validity of her as an academic, as well as the situations that she is placed in here, and some of them were thought to be not necessarily true. However, other people have said that sociological, ethnography, protocols, and methods really mean that the person embedding themselves, in this case Alice Goffman, has to grant anonymity to her sources and as a result of that she has to change things in the story to make sure that you don't know who the people she's talking to are in real life. So is it lying or is it really the methods of her discipline that have made her change things around? I'm excited to get into this one just to see where I fit in into this. Do I think it's more of a farce or do I agree with her methods? And last but not least for controversial, I picked another graphic memoir and this one's really short and that is Embroideries by Marjane Satrapi. I read Persepolis by the same author and really really loved it this year so I was looking for anything else by her and she has written a book about the sex lives of Iranian women that she knows including her mom, aunts, neighbors around her. So it focuses on what they think about men, sex, love, marriage, all those kinds of topics that are slightly taboo to talk about and I'll give you a peek of what the inside looks like. Full stop. I just realized that I forgot to talk about <laughs> one of the books that I've actually already started reading um, and that is Ghetto Side by Jill Levy. This is another book that I put in my most anticipated this year. This one I guess I shall put in the important pile or fascinating pile probably between those two. These are the kinds of topics that I enjoy reading about. Uh, race in America, policing, society in general, and gripping non-fiction narratives which is what this one has been described as. For that reason it goes in fascinating but it, I think it also goes in important because it talks about an underserved population when it comes to policing and her main argument so far is not that there is too much enforcement but that there is not enough when it comes to black men being murdered in South Central LA or South Los Angeles. So she basically says, Our criminal justice system harasses people on small pretexts, but is exposed as a coward before murder. It hauls masses of black men through its machinery, but fails to protect them from bodily injury and death. It is at once oppressive and inadequate. And I'm 100 pages into it and really enjoying it so far, so I'm excited to finish this one up in the next few days. And now that is finally <laughs> my DVR. I can't believe I forgot that one because it's the one that like I'm literally reading right now. <laughs> but it was like not in my pile, it was on my bed. So, that I forgot it. Anyway, I hope you have fun reading nonfiction this November if you are doing so. Thanks for watching my video, I'll see you in my next one. Bye bye.